like that, a psychopathic Norman Rockwell. What do you, how do you interpret that when you... Uh... Somewhat normal on the outside and, and um, someone uh, that maybe is somewhat disturbed on the inside. <laughs> That would sound like a psychopathic Norman Rock. Well, yeah. Now, what kind of kid were you? Were you a good student? Were you a pretty straight kid? And, uh... um, I was straight as an arrow. Mm -hmm. Straight as an arrow. Yeah. Which sums it up, straight <laughs> as an arrow. So at some point, you hit your head or something. I mean, something happened. At what point do we sort of, do, does one tend to veer into show business? I mean, straight as an arrow. Uh... I went to Philadelphia. Oh, say no more. Oh. So from where? Now, where are we talking? I went to Philadelphia from, indirectly, from Montana. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that could change your life forever. Tell me about it. <laughs> okay, so you get to Philadelphia, and, and so you were pretty what? Normal kid, good student? I was um, um, a student that always said uh, I had potential, but I wasn't, you know, living up to it. Oh, well, oh, well, nice That's to meet you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> This is the same boat you're in. I had the ability, but did not apply myself. Exactly right. Did you get that all the time? I did, Jay. So what made you go to Philadelphia? What, uh... I was going to art school, and I never really wanted to go to Philadelphia, but I found myself uh, crossing uh, this particular bridge in a bus, and, and the next moment I was, I was there. <laughs> did you eat anything along the way? <laughs> This... No, I Nothing. didn't. The bus never stopped until they got there. Oh, I see. Yes. I didn't know you could go directly from Montana to Philadelphia without That's stopping well, by was, bus. It was indirect. Uh, I actually left from Virginia. Oh, I and see. And I may have made... I see. Yeah. Now, I'm going through your bio and a couple of the articles about you, and, you, and you, there you say you didn't even start thinking until you were 20. Now, what, what did you mean by that? Although, uh, um, I'm beginning to understand, but... I. Uh, <laughs> I think everybody has the experience that um, uh, one day they realize uh, that for the last so many years they've been thinking in a sort of normal way like other people mm -hmm. and suddenly you have an original thought. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I know what you mean. If you, when you grow up in a small town, you know, someone once said, what's normal to you is whatever happens within 50 miles of your house. Or even just closer in. Well, whatever, yes. yeah, yeah, you know, so I mean, if... If you have geysers going off, you think everybody has geysers going off. No, I, I, exactly right. I, exactly. I know what you mean. It wasn't until yes. I came here, like I grew up in New England, and we used to read, you know, Ethan Frome and Silas Marner and all these it's depressing, work, dark yeah. stories. <laughs> you know, my, my wife's from California, and she said, what? No, we never read that. We were reading, you know, happy stories and uplifting things. So it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's odd. You went to Europe, too? I did go to Europe. You um, seemed like a Europe guy to me. It wasn't right for me at no? the time. <laughs> What about Europe did not... Now, again, taking a bus, I imagine, would be a proper... I um, went there to study uh, for three years and came back in 15 days. So you were in the accelerated program. I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What were you studying? Was it art again? I was going to study painting, and uh, the... You know how important atmosphere is for inspiration. Right. And it, it just wasn't happening. It seems Europe would be the mountain. Yeah, I know. It was, it, was, it was too clean. It was a very clean uh, thing. And it was uh, against when I, what I uh, So you came back and for. went to Newark? I went uh, No, that's when I came to... That's Port Elizabeth. I, I went to Philadelphia, which oh. is the reverse of Europe. I guess it's... Well, see, you know, actually, we're not that different. See, my wife likes all that kind of stuff. See, I like industrial areas. This, I mean, I always like... I, Jay, just, this is music to my ears. Yeah, see? So we think a lot. Branford, yours... Like you say, you're, a, one of the articles said you're a creature of habit. Explain that. We'll see if we have the similar... Well, I, some people have heard the story that I went to Bob's Big Boy for seven years every day at 2.30 and had the same thing. That was my longest habit pattern, right, I right. think. But um, I like uh, habitual behavior because it's, it's a known factor, and then your mind is free to think about other things. Well, that's, well, that's something. I mean, I do the same thing every day. Right. Every day I go home here, and at midnight I make spaghetti. There you go. I make spaghetti, I have Romano cheese, and I eat it. Do you eat alone? No, no, I, writers show up at my house around midnight, and uh -huh. we work till about 4, 4.30. 
but I make spaghetti every night. I mean, I have the, my wife doesn't understand how I can have the same thing every night for like a year and then switch to tuna fish for no reason. <laughs> so, so this is perfectly normal. But it, you burn it out after a while. Yeah, th and then one day you just go, that's it, tuna fish. Precisely. Oh, I'm just there, a, go ahead. Is there a segue from spaghetti uh, to uh, tuna fish? Is there a time that you start yearning for tuna and... No, it just happens. <laughs> Now, but I know you don't like to cook, though, right? Last time you were here, you said we didn't get into it, but you said you don't like the smell I don't of... like cooking in the home. Uh, I no, like I... to eat cooked meals and hot meals when available, but I don't like them cooked in the home because of the odor and a, a film develops on, on the walls and things. Well, I, I mean, cleaning the home could take care of a lot of that. I mean, opening a window or having a fan or something. I mean, doesn't the smell of fresh bread, maybe, or? When I'm passing a, uh, a bakery, it's it's unbelievably, you know, beautiful. Right. Oh, but you would not want to have that in your home? No. Hmm. Do you cook many meals at all? Do you cook anything? I have cooked um, three three meals. <laughs> Is it all one day? You just want to get no. out of the way? Or what? What, what would you make? What would you make for yourself? I was taught by uh, Raffaella De Laurentiis how to cook, <laughs> um, how to cook uh, rigatoni. <laughs> a rigatoni. Well, yeah. that's very easy. That's 11 minutes, and you're there. Yes, exactly right. Right, 11 minutes yeah. exactly. So you like yeah. a little al dente? Uh, yes, I do very yes. much. Yes. 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 Do you make any sauce? Or you just I make the dry sauce, spaghetti? and then I cook the pasta the same way you do every night. No, but you make the sauce. You open a jar. Um, I make the sauce, the but I, I don't make the tomatoes. I buy them. You know. No, no. You're right. <laughs> I, I, again, God has to take a certain amount of credit. For exactly. some I, I no, catch it somewhere along the line. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the garlic press and all that. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. It's very good. Well, tell me about the, the show now a little bit. Talk about the show is called, as you said, on the air. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the first three uh, uh, letters of the alphabet are A, B, C. That's the network it's on. Right. And it's on at 9.30 at night on Saturday. Now, that seems like an odd, some people hissing A, B, C. Good. <laughs> uh, I may be joining, joining that, but... No, uh, no, that's odd. <laughs> that's a... Well, they do stick you in kind of a strange time period. Because, you know, if you're not in television, you think, oh, I'm on Saturday night at 9.30. This is the best time to be on. That's what you think, but... Most of the people need, who would watch a show uh, like this. Yes, I need the people people's help. I, I, um, this is, uh, if you could uh, watch on Saturday night at 9.30, it would be great. And, uh, now tell us what the show is about. <laughs> is it a strange It's a show? comedy. It's comedy. a good-natured, wacko comedy coming from 1957 with a strange little breeze of the avant-garde. Yeah. And, um, and it's, when you say it, wacko, that's saying something. Well, it's... <laughs> It's uh, it does make people laugh. It's it's a comedy. And it's a sp is it a spoof on a variety show or something? It's a it's a live television show done by a fourth rate uh, network called Zablotnik Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> well, I'm sure it'll be interesting. I mean, all things go wrong yeah. uh, on the show. Is it sort of like the old Sid Caesar show, like something like that? It's it's um, it's got a uh, like I say a wind from from those shows, but right. it's it's taken that sort of theme and, and twisting it. And I have to say to, hello to uh, Mary Ellen from South Chicago. Oh, that seems fair. Okay. That seems fair. Okay. Well, it sounds good. It's called On the Air, and I shall watch. I enjoy your work, so I like wacko weird things. 